Let's talk about righteousness. Okay, the blessing pronounced on the righteous person is that their lawless deeds are forgiven and their sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin because righteousness delivers from death. Noah, Noah is a good example of that. Noah and his whole household were delivered because Noah was righteous. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Imagine that. Okay, Lot, Lot is another example. Okay, Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot, Okay, Lot was righteous. Okay, and righteousness delivers from death. Okay, remember that. I want to show you how to be righteous according to Scripture. The Lord listens to their prayers. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, but his face is against those who do evil. And if you read the Psalm 34 version of that, it's to wipe the memory of them from the earth. Boy, imagine that. But he hears the cry of the righteous. The Lord hears the cry of the righteous and delivers them out of all of their trouble. All of their trouble. Imagine that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Do you want to be righteous? I want to show you about righteousness according to Scripture. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. The righteous, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. That promises for the righteous. Again, okay, check this part out. Every tongue that rises against them in judgment, the Lord shall condemn. Imagine that. You know, let's just think about that for a second. Okay, the blessing of Abraham is upon them. That means those who bless them will be blessed, and those who curse them will be cursed. Imagine that. Those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Do you want to be righteous? I want to show you how to be righteous according to Scripture. I know you've probably already heard a preacher say that you're already righteous. Okay, and that, and that may be the case, but uh, the conditions are, are never mentioned. We never mention the conditions. Okay, and we need to know that because God's people are short for lack of knowledge. The unrighteous always suppress the truth. Always. Okay, and my friend, the unrighteous don't make it. They don't inherit. They don't have an inheritance. So I want to show you how to be righteous according to Scripture. And I want to show you the conditions. Who am I? Absolutely nobody. Okay, and never have been anybody. Okay, if anyone thinks he's something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Okay, but I am and I will be what the Lord has called me to be. I'm Alan Ballou and I'm a Bible teacher by the grace of God and not according to men. Okay, I want to show you how to be righteous, imputed righteousness, and then righteous by faith according to scripture okay get your bible out and learn these verses for yourself we can be saved and never learn righteousness so my prayer for everyone who watches this video is that the lord would open your heart to heed the scriptures righteous belief includes hearing the word of god believing the word of god and speaking the word of god Okay, and I'm going to show you the scriptures for that. Okay, let's start with belief. Okay, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteous or imputed to him as righteousness, whatever your Bible says there. Okay, but the words it was imputed to him were not written for his sake alone, but also for us. In other words, we're going to be imputed righteousness in the same way that Abraham was imputed righteousness or credited righteousness. Okay, and that's assuming we believe God in the same way that Abraham believed God. Understand that. How did Abraham believe? He was fully convinced, or some Bibles say fully persuaded. He was fully convinced that God had the power to do what he had promised. Okay, it was just that simple. Fully convinced. 
Okay, in other words, he didn't waver back and forth through unbelief regarding something God had promised. He just simply believed it. If God said it, he believed it. All right, it's just that simple. Contrary to hope, in hope, Abraham believed. In other words, even if it was something that seemed impossible, Abraham still believed God. Okay, that's the type of belief that gets imputed or credited righteousness. That's the type of belief we're going to have to have in order to be credited righteousness. Okay, and so we have to understand that. So it's just, it's not like an automatic thing. Okay, I'm going to give you plenty of examples uh, of, of things that we don't believe, that we should believe, that are clearly written in Scripture. Okay, and we're going to have to believe God as Abraham believed God in order to be imputed righteousness. So if God said it in Scripture, and in these last days, God has spoken to us through His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. But if God said it, we're going to have to believe it point blank period. Okay, understand that in order to be imputed righteousness or credited righteousness. We have to submit to God's way of being righteous. If we don't, we make the same mistake Israel made 2,000 years ago. Let me give you some spiritual principles, okay, that work, whether we know them or not, okay, so that you can understand these things. Okay, look at John chapter 5, verse 38. Whatever scripture we do not believe is not going to remain on the inside of us. Okay, so let's, let's look at that verse, John 5, 38. But you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent him you do not believe. Okay, we don't just believe there is someone named Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Okay, Jesus is also the Word of God. Okay, Jesus is the Word of God. Okay, look at that. In this same chapter, look at, look, look at uh, verse 24. Same chapter. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Okay? Whoever hears Jesus' words and believes God has everlasting life and shall not even come into judgment, okay, but pass from death to life. Imagine that. That should be your favorite verse in the Bible starting today. Okay? I would memorize that if I were you. Okay? So now, get this right here. Okay, Jesus always spoke exactly what God commanded him to speak. Imagine that. Always, always, Jesus always spoke exactly what God commanded him to speak. So we've got to hear the words of Jesus, and Jesus spoke the word of God, and we have to believe God, okay, in order to pass from death to life and have everlasting life. Okay, John 5, 24, let that sink in. So here's what you're up against, okay? These are spiritual principles that have been working ever since we've been born, but we don't know it. The word that we hear, if we don't believe that word, it's not going to remain on the inside of us. Okay, John 5, 38. Okay, that word of God that Jesus spoke is not going to remain in us if we don't believe it. Okay, and if it doesn't remain in us, it's going to be easy to speak against it. Okay, and it will be as if it doesn't even exist. It's not living in us if we don't believe it. If these verses don't remain in us, then we will follow the path that seems right, but it ends in death. Check this out. Whenever we hear kingdom teaching, and kingdom teaching is teaching uh, about entering the kingdom of God or remaining in the kingdom, remaining in the kingdom of God. Any kingdom teaching okay, that we don't understand, the wicked one is going to come and snatch it out of our hearts. So again, it will be as if those scriptures don't even exist, okay? So in this series, I'm going to mention a lot of scriptures, okay, that you probably don't have living on the inside of you. I'm going to mention a lot of kingdom teaching, okay? And so you're going to have to force that word to live on the inside of you. First, you've got to believe it, as Abraham believed. And number two, even if it's taken out, because some of it's going to be taken out until you understand it, until you put it into practice, 
uh, if we're forgetful hearers, then uh, the Word won't remain in us also. But that's why we have to abide in the Word. If you abide in the Word, you really, my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. We have to abide, remain in the Word. Okay, so if that Scripture is taken out, we're in the Word every day. So we're going to put it back in. Okay, we're going to put it back in. We're going to put it in until it remains in us. So understand that. Okay, got to hear it. Got to believe it as Abraham believed God. All right. And then after that, we're trying to make it remain in us. Okay. So understand that. Jesus wants us to believe in him through the words of his disciples. Okay. Every book in the New Testament was written by a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's clearly written by a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay. And Jesus wants us to believe in him through their word. Every soul who will not hear that prophet will be condemned. Every soul, every person who will not hear that prophet, and, and the prophet we're talking about here, Peter identified Jesus as being that prophet to come that everybody was waiting on at that time. Okay, the prophet that Moses spoke about in uh, Deuteronomy 18, 18 and 19. Okay, so Peter identified Jesus as being that prophet. Okay, and every soul that will not hear Jesus' words will be destroyed. Okay, Jesus said when he sent his disciples out, he said it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for the city that rejects their words. That's how serious this is. Okay, we've got to hear the word of God spoken by Jesus' disciples in the New Testament. And we've got to believe it. Okay, every Christian who's going to make it into heaven hears the Word of God, believes the Word of God. Don't take this lightly because belief is a condition. Everyone who does not believe will be condemned. Okay, it's just that simple. Everyone who does not believe will be condemned. God is going to see to it. Okay, imagine that. Yeah, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 11 12. God is going to see to it that everyone who does not believe but had pleasure in unrighteousness will be condemned. They're going to believe the lie. Okay, so understand that. You know, understand how serious this is. Most of these verses are kingdom teaching verses. And so that's why you don't normally hear these verses. Okay, they're not living in the people who speak against them. Okay, they're not living in them. They've been taken from it. So it's, it's just as if they don't even exist. Okay, they got the wrong message. Okay, in order to be righteous, imputed righteousness... We have to believe God as Abraham believed God. Hearing and believing is not like a one-time deal either. Okay, as the Spirit leads us into all truth, we have to continue to believe. We have to continue to hear it. Okay, in John chapter 6, uh, 60 through 66, there were some disciples who heard something that Jesus said that they didn't like, so they no longer followed Jesus. And disciples who do not believe Jesus do not hear Jesus and do not follow Jesus can be snatched out of his hand. Okay, we're going to read John 10, 25 through 27 with verse 28. If we just read verse 28, then we will be deceived. Okay, and like I said, you know, those other verses, kingdom teaching, 25 through 28, we've got to believe, we've got to hear, we've got to follow Jesus. That's the sheep he's talking about. Those verses are not remaining on the inside of the people who speak against him. Okay, the people who don't believe them. So all they quote is John 10, 28. And so people don't, don't believe that we have to do anything. Okay, but we have to believe Jesus, hear Jesus, and follow Jesus in order not to be snatched out of his hand. We have to believe all the way to the saving of the soul. Okay, understand that. We have to believe all the way to the saving of the soul. We eagerly await through the Spirit, for the righteousness of faith for which we hope. At first, we are imputed righteousness because we believe as Abraham believed. But we eagerly await through the Spirit for the righteousness of faith for which we hope. And we're going to get more into that probably in the second video in this series or a third video, somewhere down in there, okay? But we're going to get this imputed righteousness thing down pat first. Okay, so we're imputed righteousness first. Okay, but we have to believe all the way to the saving of the soul. With the heart, we believe unto righteousness, all the way to righteousness. 
And with the mouth, confession is made all the way to salvation, unto salvation. Okay, so it's not a one-time thing as, as, as we have been taught. That's why it's written, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Okay, it's possible to have an evil heart of unbelief and turn away from God or, or just stop believing God. Okay, most people don't believe that, but like I said, that's kingdom teaching. They speak against those verses because those verses are not living in them. It's happening today all over this country. Okay, and I'm going to give you some examples here in a minute and, and so that you can see that. Okay, but for now, just believe these verses. Okay, believe, accept, and believe these verses in your heart. This may be the last chance for some people to hear these verses before they hear them on the last day. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. So now when you hear well-meaning Christians speak against these verses, then you'll know what's going on. Okay, there's, those verses aren't living in them because either they don't believe them, okay, or they've spoken against them, or, or they, have been, they don't understand them, so they've been snatched out of their heart. Okay, and, and uh, they're not replacing them. They're not putting, putting them back in. If that's happened to you, okay, if you're hearing some of these verses for the first time, then you may have to read them out loud, okay, so because the Word of God breaks strongholds in our thinking. Okay, we should allow the Word of God to judge the thoughts and, and, and intents of our hearts, okay, and, and allow that Word to break stronghold. I believe that Word in the same way Abraham believed, so it'll break that stronghold in your thinking. Everyone who's going to make it to heaven, believes the Word of God. They hear it and they believe it, point blank, period. Let us repent and return to the Lord our God in keeping with His ways found in His Word. Be determined, okay, to learn these scriptures for yourself, okay? Believe the Word of God no matter what, so these scriptures will remain on the inside of you, okay? And keep putting them in so that they remain in you, so that you won't speak against it. It's impossible to believe something that we speak against. Okay, so as quick as you hear somebody speak against one of these verses, you'll know a few things about them. Number one, they cannot be righteous by faith because they have spoken against the faith. And some even take a stand to, against the Word of God. They just take a stand and fight against the Word of God. Okay, they've been taken captive by the devil to do his will. Okay, and our instructions are to gently instruct them. Okay, so that they will come to their senses and escape the, the snare of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Okay, but you're going to see that. You're going to see people take a stand against verses that are not living on the inside of them, not even knowing that those verses even exist. All right, the Word of God breaks those strongholds if they're willing to listen. Okay, but don't get caught up in arguing with people. Okay, because then you may not remain in love. Okay, so understand that. And that's why I have totally stopped arguing with people. Okay, if they can't see it, I'm just moving on. Okay, and if they get to where that they're, they are name calling and everything else, I just simply block them. Don't let anybody trip you up. We have to keep the covenant. We have to remain in love. And they don't rest until they make someone fall. In these last days, some people have already departed from the faith. Okay, to follow the doctrines of, of demons. Okay, imagine that. Think about that for a second. They're going to teach you to speak against what is written in your own Bible. Okay, so you're going to have to abide in this word, remain in this word, continually allow it to renew your mind with the truth like every day until you know the truth so that you'll know what you're listening to. Okay, in order to be righteous by faith, we have to speak in line with the faith. There are things that we should say and things that we should never say. Because we can't possibly believe in our heart something that we speak against. Okay, and just by proclaiming something that's false, we can fall away from the faith. Understand that. Okay, so, so if somebody teach you, teaches you to say something that's, that's false, and you keep saying it, or you keep saying amen when they say it, amen means let it be so for me and my house, uh, basically, then it's as if you said it. And if you keep saying those things that are false, you, you will eventually fall away from the faith. The words we speak can defile us. Okay, understand that. Check that out. 
the words that we speak, simple words, can defile us. That's to be ruined or to be made useless, okay, defiled, just by our words. By our own words, we will be acquitted, and by our own words, we will be condemned. Understand that. You've got to believe that, just as Abraham believed God. You've got to believe it. With the spirit of faith, we speak in line with what is written. But with the spirit of error, we speak from the viewpoint of this world. I've met preachers who can't see kingdom teaching whatsoever. Can't see it. Okay, and once, once your heart becomes blind, okay, then you'll be past feeling. Or some Bibles say beyond sensitivity or past sensitivity. Okay, and that is a scary thing. I don't want to be in that condition. Okay, but that's happening today right here in this country. Understand that. We cannot speak against the faith and be righteous by faith. And here's the deal. The inheritance depends on the righteousness of faith, not imputed righteousness, the righteousness of faith. And so we're eagerly awaiting through the Spirit for the righteousness of faith. Okay, more on that later. Okay, but understand it. Got to believe it. Got to hear it. We have to learn how to speak in line with it. Allowing this word to judge the thoughts and intents of our hearts. Let me give you an example of all this, because there are millions of Christians today who have been taught to fight against the Word of God, and they don't even know it. Okay, look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 down through verse 13. Let me read that to you. This is a faithful saying, For if we die with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we die with Him, we agree to die with Him through our baptism. Imagine that. Those who find their life will lose it, but those who lose their life for the Lord will find it. We got to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily. Think about that for a second. Do you believe that in your heart? Okay, and if you believe that in your heart, then that's what we are speaking, and we're not speaking against it, right? So that we can be righteous, right? Think about that for a second. Let's read on down. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. That's if we endure, okay? And if we deny him, he also will deny us. Think about that for a second. If we are faithless, he's going to remain faithful because he cannot deny himself. Well, what does that mean? Okay, if we are faithless, he's going to remain faithful to the word of God because Jesus is the word of God. He cannot deny himself, and when he comes back, he's going to be known as the Word of God. And the exact word that we deny today, or that we reject today, will be the word that will judge us on the last day. John chapter 12, 47 and 48. Okay, if we hear Jesus' words, but we don't believe it, he's not going to judge us now. But the words that he spoke will judge us on the last day. Okay, let that sink in for a second. If we're faithless, he's going to remain faithful to his word because he is the word. He cannot deny himself. Think about that for a second. Okay, just, just imagine that for a second because all churches deny certain scriptures. Okay, let me show that to you. How many churches preach John 15 verse 6 as an example? Okay? You think about it. All right, let's be honest with ourselves here, okay? If we were righteous, think about it. If we were righteous, then we would believe John 15, verse 6 in our heart, and we would be teaching Christians that if they did not abide in Jesus, that they were going to burn in the fire. But let's be honest with ourselves. We're not teaching that. Okay, we're not teaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ, okay? No church in this country has any room to talk bad about the church across the street. Not a single one. We're only condemning ourselves. We're only judging ourselves because we do the same things. We all deny Scripture. Imagine that. Think about that for a second. Okay, what if we believe John 15, 9 and 10? What if we believe that verse in our hearts? Okay, then we would be teaching Christians that they would need to obey Jesus 
in order to abide in Jesus so that they would not burn in the fire. Okay, because those who don't abide in Jesus will burn in the fire. How many of us are teaching that today? You think about that. We deny scriptures, boldly deny scriptures, and then we turn right around, okay, and ask people if they believe something that's not even written in the scriptures. Okay, think about that for a second. Okay, are we righteous? Only the righteous go free. Righteousness delivers from death. Jesus said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, think about it for a second. Let us repent and return to the Lord our God. Now you can see verses like Matthew chapter 7, 13 and 14. How most Christians are on the broad path to destruction and don't even know it. Okay, now you can see verses like Luke 13, 24 through 28, how that's going to happen. Strive to enter. Okay, strive to enter. Imagine that. Who's preaching that? Think about that for a second. You know, we could go on and on naming the verses that we have just totally rejected today in the church today. I'm talking mainstream churches in this country. All have rejected scriptures. It's happening right before our eyes, right now, here today in this country, but it doesn't have to happen to you. Okay, you be determined to believe the Word of God. You take a stand for the Word of God. You test everything you hear and only hold fast to the good. It's the righteous who will never be forsaken and their children never begging for food. That's a promise for the righteous. The Lord is going to forsake millions of people. Okay, look at 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2. Pause this and read that verse to yourself. Okay, the Lord is with us while we are with Him. Okay, if we forsake Him, He will forsake us. Look at 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9. Okay, pause this and read that verse. Okay, read that passage right there. And my friend, I'm going to tell you, you're going to gasp for air, okay? Because your whole Christian life, you have heard the exact opposite. I'm telling you, these scriptures are not remaining in us, okay? They're being snatched out, and we're not putting them back, so we don't even know they exist. We could go on example after example, but you get, you get the picture. Let us repent and return to the Lord our God in keeping with His ways found in His Word.